the things that people ask me the most is how to price my art. And I know, when you think about price, it can be a very hard thing to understand. How can I put a number in my talent? How do I know if I'm charging too much or too little? It's hard, right? So here today, I'm bringing five things that you need to consider when you are pricing your art. Do you wanna know what they are? So come with me. Hi, I'm Sira. I was born in an artistic family and as an agent, manager and producer, I've worked for many years selling artists from all around the world. Today, I want to help you to become a full-time artist. Hello, I am Sira and I'm here to help you to become a full-time artist. And to become a full-time artist, you need to know how to price your art. If your price is too expensive, people will never buy from you in the beginning. But if it's too cheap, are you valuing your art? Those are very hard things to answer, right? So today I want to bring to you five things that you need to consider when you are pricing your art. The first thing that you need to consider is your market niche. And what is a market niche? I have a full video about that. Check here on the card if you want, but I'm going to summarize for you. Your market niche, it's putting together all the people who can be your right buyers, people are really interested in your work, plus everyone else who will work with the same crowd. It means your competitors, but also people who sell other type of products that can complement yours. So for example, if you are a painter, people who are selling the frame, it's part of your niche. If you are a photographer, people who will sell some sort of finalization for photography can be in your niche as well. But the most important person in your niche is your audience. So when you are putting the price on your artwork, you need to consider how your audience will understand this price. Try to put yourself on their shoes. And when you put a price on an artwork, try to understand how people will deal with that. Think about yourself. When you go to a store and you want to buy uh, jeans, for example, what's the first thing that you do? You compare the other jeans and see how much each one of them are, right? So you should be doing the same thing, looking around, seeing all your competitors, the people who are selling art for the same audience that you are selling and see how much are they charging for each one of these art pieces? What they have that is better than me? What they have that's worse than me? Why I can offer that's different? When you start to define these things, it start to be clear in your mind how you can show to your audience that your product is better and have the right price for whatever you're offering. The second thing that you need to consider is your medium. We know that depending on the medium that you use, you need to have a better technique or you need to have very specific products. If you are an illustrator, for example, and you use paper and pencils, you will have some sort of technique and you'll have some sort of cost for that. However, if you do exactly the same type of drawing on a canvas and instead of using pencils, you use oil, we know that the technique is really different. And we also know that the supplies to do that are really different. So if you are selling on canvas, you can charge more for your products than if you're selling on paper. If you're selling digital art, for example, it's really easy for you to replicate the same drawing. So this drawing is not so valuable if it was in a mural in a wall. Every time that you want to create a new piece, Ask yourself how I am present this piece. What's the materials that I am using? What's the techniques that I am using? If those techniques are very hard, if the materials that you're using are expensive, if it's really difficult to find other people who do exactly what you do, so your work is more valuable than others and it justify a bigger price. However, if your type of work doesn't require lots of supplies, if you are not so unique and there are other artists selling something alike, try to reduce a little bit your price. You start to have more chances to sell. The third point that you need to consider is the level of mastery. Well, everyone starts from zero and we don't know how to create anything the first time that you start to do that, right? So I know that if you start to paint this year, maybe your mastery is not amazing. Maybe you need to develop some skills and that's okay. And this is not a problem for you to start to sell your art. You should be starting to sell your art as soon as you start to create that. However, the price that you're going to put on this artwork needs to be balanced 
based on how much you can offer. If you're starting right now, you start with more accessible prices. And the more you evolve on your journey as an artist, you can increase your price over time. People will understand that a better product also has a more expensive price. But something that you're creating right now that maybe don't have all the professionalism that we imagine, well, it's not that you cannot sell, but you need to adjust your price for that. The fourth point is about costs. Of course, if you're talking about price, you need to mind your costs. And what I mean by that, every time that you create something, you are putting money and time on this piece. When you sell this piece, you want to receive back something that will compensate. So every time that you're going to put a price on an artwork, you need to start with your costs. Try to keep track of all the supplies that you're putting on this artwork and how much do they cost for you. You're using a canvas, how much this canvas costs? Are you using a software, how much this software costs? Are you using pencils, ink, or any other thing? How much this things cost? But not just that. Also, try to imagine all the other costs that you can have. The electricity of your studio, the water that you have there, maybe the lunch that you have on that day, and how much time you put to create that specific piece. Some of the pieces that we create, we can do in one hour, two hours, three hours. But for example, if you are a photographer and you made a trip to a specific place and waited for the golden hour to take the perfect picture, you know that your cost is more than just click it. All of those things adds value to your final product. So be mindful of all of those things when you are creating your price. Also, try to understand how you're going to deliver this product to your final consumer and understand if you need or not to be mindful of the shipping. Lots of artists just forget about that. They forget about how they will literally deliver the final product to the client. And if they don't start to think about this in the beginning when they are putting this piece to sell, after someone buy, it's really complicated for you to start this type of negotiation. It's something that you need to have since the beginning. So try to focus your sales in the beginning close to where you live or close to where your studio is. Because you know this country, you know this positioning where you are. Don't try to be too greedy and sell to the whole world if you don't know how you can ship your paintings to Russia, for example, or if you don't know how to deal with people in China or India or places on the other side of the world. If you don't know how to deal with these characteristics of each one of the places that are far away from you, don't sell to these places. Try to concentrate it on places that you already know and always separated your real price from the cost of the shipping. So the person, when they are buying from you, they know that those prices connect to the shipping part. It's just that expensive because they are far away from you and not because you are trying to overcharge your creations. And the last thing, the thing number five is remember your personal needs. We always forgot about that. And what I mean by personal needs? When you decided that you're going to be a full-time artist, you know that the money you receive from selling your art pieces will not just give you back the money at the time that you invested there, but also will support your lifestyle, will support your family, will support everything that you need to pay in life. So if you imagine that you need 5,000 in a month, work with these costs as personal needs and try to adapt all your prices in a way that you have 5,000 as a profit in the end of the month. Because we know that this is how much you need to live. When we are creating this part of personal needs inside the structure of our price, the first thing that we need to know is what I need to prioritize in my lifestyle. Do I need to pay things for me? Do I need to pay things for somebody else, like my wife, my husband, my girlfriend, my kids, my family? If you know that you need to pay for things for yourself and other people, put all of those costs inside your personal needs. But also, imagine what type of lifestyle you want to have. 
you want to have trips? Do you want to buy better material? Do you want to expand your studio? Do you want to have better lightning uh, for your videos? Whatever thing you imagine that you need will be inside the personal needs. And with this in mind, you know that you can produce, sell and receive back the money that will support you, your endeavors and your family. So that was the episode for today. Those are the five things that you needed to consider before putting your price out there. Don't forget any one of those because without those you cannot keep doing your art. And here we work with full-time artists. So if you want to learn more about that, I need to tell you that I have a full training about it. I want to see you there. I need to tell you that I have a full masterclass for free. How can you take the leap and become the artist that you want to become? It's not a sales pitch. In this masterclass, I will help you with a real training that will give you the step by step. So if you want to check this, go here in this website and you watch a two hour class totally for free so you can start to be a full-time artist right now. Thank you so much for keeping making art.